Hello everybody, let's Polly. I'm gonna teach you guys how to make the trees that I made earlier. I've been asked multiple times on how to do it, so let's just jump right on and show you. It's not that hard. First, obviously, 3D view. I put it in front view, orthographic. It's really easy to model, kinda difficult to model in perspective view. That's just for obviously looking at it. So, first thing you wanna do, put your cursor wherever you want it, I'm gonna put it here, doesn't matter. Let's add a cylinder, five sides. Lower it on the uh, left column here. Go back to front view, shrink it down, in edit mode. That's probably too narrow, so go like that. I like to get the full shape or form, so I'm going to pull it to the height that's going to be at. Put a loop cut in, you can put it in one, or if you do controller again and use a scroll wheel, you can put in multiple loops. Uh, we'll put in two. Grab, if you want to grab fast, you can just alt click on something. And it'll grab the loop. I'll click over here, it'll go all the way up. So I'll click there. Rotate it around. Rotate on either the X, the Y, the Z. Well, rotate on all of those, really. That's where you get the unique shapes going. So you see how it's starting to twist? That's going to look really good with the lighting effect. So, next thing we want to do is shrink down the tops a little bit because this mino tree does get narrower. Maybe make this a little bit fatter. Alright. Looks. Looks decent, kind of skinnier than these trees. Maybe I'll just spend a little bit more time. Rotate this, just back a little bit. Size that up, size that up. Yeah, that, that looks good. I like that. Now, control, oh no, it's just A, sorry. Just press A. Uh, Shift D to duplicate, R to rotate, 90. This is going to be the branch. Size it down. That's a good spot. So. The way I make my branches, it's not very difficult. Um, even though I told you to go with the five here, I want you to, like, five base, I mean. Five. I would prefer, or the way I do it, is I take these six. Reason why is because that, when you extrude it, I know it doesn't look like a circle now, but can easily be made to look like a circle. The branches are going to be narrower and they're also going to be, I guess, you want to have extra detail there because then they become more noticeable. Usually on smaller things I do put more detail. I know that sounds strange, but like picture when you're looking at something's eyes, right? They're gonna have more detail in it. Just how it's done. Now you're wondering what's going on here. Well that's because this face, not really good face. You could if you wanted, just go in, delete the face, fill it appropriately. Grab these four, fill, from view, pull it over, and there you go. That's how I'll leave it. Or you could just pull those over, and then there wouldn't be that shadow line right there, and it creates a really unique shadow. I believe for those, yes, let's see, I left it, but we'll do it this way for now. So go back in, we'll go back to Control R for a loop cut, grab, rotate, we'll use the B tool to select, because I prefer doing that, size it down, and there you go. You have your first branch. You might want to adjust this a little bit, pull this up, start giving it some, once again, unique shapes. Making some more unique shapes. Uh, L to select a full object. That's really handy to know. If you press L, you get both. If you unselect, right? So then you can do this. You can hide. Trust me, learning that was a lifesaver for me. Now, L, Shift D, size it down. Let's make this a higher branch. Mm, rotate it. I don't really want to go with perfect rotations because then it just looks flat and fake. You still want this to look believable, right? Just an artistic view of reality, I guess. Grab both, lower it, mm, rotate it about there. We'll line up this one first, so seven to go top view. Pull it over, you're probably wondering how do I know? Well, thicker parts are the bottom, this thinner one is the top, so we know it's going like this. We'll grab this, do the same thing. Oh, and I was off. Clearly I don't know. Uh, we'll change this one up a little bit so it doesn't look too much of the same. Right. So now those two look like completely different branches. These two still look identical, so we'll do the same thing I did here. Just pull that in, drop that down, maybe pull this whole thing in a little bit. You get a weird angle going, look at that. Too much of a weird angle, probably. That's that's a little bit better. Sure, we'll, we'll stick with that. Kind of goes out, but no worries. Next thing you'd want to do are the leaves. Now, a lot of people, for some reason, they just like adding a ball. Cool. You can add the ball, move it around, play it like putty. But it just doesn't... How do you describe this? The vertices just don't make it look artistic, I guess. So if you add a mesh, 
Let me go to the sphere. That's what I do. I do it a ball, but I go six segments, four rings. I don't like where that's placed. I don't know why it's way down there. I guess it's where I did put my pivot point. But the reason why you do this is when you go into edit mode and you turn on proportional editing and you just pull these down a little bit, you've limited the amount of vertices you have, but you've made this flat appearance and it's very sharp, crisp line halfway through and it just looks gorgeous in my opinion. So we'll pull this one up, pull it more and look, now we've got this cool lofty kind of feel, size it up, rotate it. And now we're getting a lofty tree. So, obviously what I do, shift D, size it down, and put it on these different branches. Go back in maybe, make this one a little bit less lofty. Uh, probably gonna have to shrink this down. There. Right, do that over here, rotate it around. Always try to get this in the center. Because these are clumps, they're not realistic, but the clump would, I guess, be based around where the branch is. We'll just get this through here. Mm, I have it on the wrong layer. Let's shift click everything, move to the first layer, and then we'll also go to the first layer. You probably won't have to do that because you're probably in the first layer. Pull this down. Oh no, that oh that's the weird angle. Duplicate it. Bring one over, pull it up, size it down because it's a really small branch. Pull it around. Good. Now, if you notice, what I've always, what I do with these trees is make it look like they're starting here and they're flowing down like that. Alright, starting here, flowing down. So it's kind of still bushy, it's not the. It still works though. But that's basically all you need to do this tree, right? You're gonna, to make this a lot easier, group it all. So, control J, that's not, sorry, not group it all, join it all. Now it's one object. You can press L, just get this bush, this bush, get all your bushes, that's fine. So if we go over to the modifiers, we can give it a decimate modifier. Put on triangulate, go down maybe 0.7, press tab, you see what you've done, and it's created these lines. Once you apply it, it's going to turn these beautiful little rectangles into triangles. Why do you do that? Well, look, it's, you can see, the shading. It gives you a cool, unique shading effect. And look at this stem. Like, it's just going to look great now. Hit apply. Now they all have the triangles. So, the next thing you got to do is add your materials. I've chosen some pretty fanciful colors. They're unique. You wouldn't see them often. Red trees. Not really many things do red trees like this. They're unrealistic, but they look good. Let's apply bark to the whole thing. Obviously that sounds kind of redundant, but that's just how Blender does it. Apply the model the material to the entire model. Add a new layer. Make this one the darker bark. Go on face select, hide the backgrounds, and start coloring. The key here is to try to color on the bends. So you take the solid here, because it makes sense, come to the ground, and you get that. So now it's going with a bend, and it's a nice spike that ends. So I wouldn't just take that, because that would look silly, just, it's flat. It wouldn't mesh well, but I would take this one, because it comes out and it's sharp. I could even take that one, and now it's also on a bend. It's actually really, looks really good. <laughs> uh, let's take some of these. We'll take that. We can do these two, because they close off the flat end this, I'll grab, maybe even this big one, go over there, sure, take that one, hmm. guess I'll just do it like that, not really a fan of this edge with that there, but yeah, because now see that doesn't look that great, so I'll take that one off and I'll just go up, that's fine, that's a sign bark too, slightly dark, Probably should have put more on the base than I did on the top. Um, but we'll leave it. Now, add in the material. Choose whatever you want for the leaves. You can see here I have well, orange and red, and then the second variation in the hue. So we'll go orange. Press L for the one that you want for your orange, and apply. 
And you know what? Let's make this one also orange. Go in, get your other color. Take the ones that you want and apply. Or hit a sign. Now, the way I got my color, which is already created, I just. I'll make it again, it's fine. Click these orange, press the plus. It'll give you a new name, but also you create a new material. You can change that. You go here, pull down the. I don't know what you call this. Pull this down, make it darker. So we for now will just use, or I for now will just use Hue 2, and I will start applying it onto the triangles as mentioned before. Try to make them always be going on bends. So I'll choose these, something like this. That's getting a little bit tricky. I don't want that. It's fine. Uh, I don't really like that much, but since it's kind of a point, it doesn't look bad. So we'll assign it. Cool. Now, last thing to do is red. I guess it's more of a pink. But I wrote red. Now, let's pick the ones we want. Take a couple of these. Yeah, it looks good, really. I don't really need more. Um, get this one, get a nice wrap around. That one. It's really upsetting to me. <laughs> I don't like when that happens. Let's do a different wrap around. That's just a preference thing, though, right? Like, you can, if you like what that looks like, then by all means do that. Just I personally prefer it like that. Because now, look at that. Yes. Beautiful. Now, you can shift D to duplicate this, go in. Turn this onto vertices select, unhide that, grab both of these maybe, duplicate. Oh, you also you're gonna need to turn off proportional editing. Pull this, pull it down. You got yourself another wacky branch, which is in the body. Rotate some more. And another perfectly colored clump of leaves. Rotate it again, rotate it down. Now it looks like a more unique clump of leaves. As you can see here with this one, there's only a couple branches. There's some that have even more branches off them. Uh, but there's a lot of leaves. The reason I did that is because I was going for the effect of just like really overgrown leaves. And it's easy to do. Now that you have all these, just grab it, duplicate, size it up. That's going to be too orange. We'll have to change one of these to red now. Go to face select, something like that. Grab the ones you want. This can be sloppy because if you're going to be doing something like this, we just have a bunch of leaves. Coloring these doesn't matter too much as long as it's there. So we'll leave it like that. Cool. Let's grab this one, duplicate it, size it down, put it on top even. Put it over here, rotate. Put one over here. Rotate it around. Let's grab this. Get some more color on this side. No, we definitely need something right there. So just something like that. Now look at this tree. It's starting to look overgrown like those. It's a little bit sloppier. It's kind of leaning tall to one side. I would add more to this side to adjust with that. Put a branch there maybe. But now you got those trees. So if we just align the active camera. <laughs> that one looks really funny. Turn both these on. Move that around. Grab it. Pull it back, pull it over, and then render the image. You'll see those trees look like these, just with less leaves. And that's all you have to do. Now, just some key principles you want to follow. Triangles are your friend. I love triangles. It's, you don't want that for normal modeling, but for low poly art, that's where you get all these cool, unique shades and shadows going on. This one's really simple, and this one's kind of flobby. Obviously, you spend more time on it. Like that, you probably want to avoid, especially if it's on the right in the front. This one should be more on top and kind of looks like a cherry on top. A little bit silly. But still, you can so many different art styles with this. You follow, rotate these at random, triangulate it, and you get really cool lighting effects. And that's how I made these trees. So that's my first tutorial. I don't know what I'm going to do for the next one. These are actually really hard to do, especially talking while you're making something. 
it becomes difficult to actually focus on modeling. And I know when I'm modeling, I don't talk at all. I blast music and I just go. So, hope you enjoyed it. Maybe give me ideas for the next one. See you soon. Take care. Cheers, everybody. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you enjoyed what you see. The support means a lot, and I'd really appreciate it. So, thanks. Take care.